In this video, I have min-maxed Jire to the limit, to the point where she is just even more busted than my Jire is busted video. I, I know, right? A reminder, this is a min-maxed loadout. It requires Pacific things. If you do not have them, then you can just use the other variant that I showed in the other video, which is just fine. But let me show you how this particular one works. We still have pillage, but we're insta-stripping. Just like that. Look at that combo. No need for Matarai this time. Insta strip. Insta. Look at that. They have no armor and they just evaporate. Like, this is disgusting. To the point where <laughs> we don't even use energy sometimes on casting abilities. And I will show you why. Yes, it is thanks to Arcane. Some of you already guessed what Arcane it was. We actually have a slot for a utility Arcane rather than an arcane that gives us more power strength. It is so comfortable that I don't even, like, Jaya right now might be one of my new favorite Warframes. We're priming enemies, explode. We get energy in return. You have a problem with these guys? No, you don't. D don't lie, you don't have a problem with those guys. This is supposed to be Steel Path, right? I'm, I'm chilling. I'm more chill than an Anaros main in, in a level two mission. Yeah, l l let me put on my glasses. Okay, without this augment, the build won't work. It's very simple. As long as Cathode's Grace is active, the third ability, and you get kills with Rotor Swell, her fourth ability, it prolongs the duration of Rotor Swell, so you can infinitely keep these abilities up at all times. All right, let's take a look at the abilities. Our helmet ability is, of course, Pillage. We're replacing our first ability. What this does is send out an expanding ring. When the ring touches an enemy, they lose armor and shields. This strip depends on your power strength. However, I'm using a little trick to get us 100% armor strip without fully maxing out the required power strength, which is 400%. And that's by simply slapping on Corrosive Projection. That Corrosive Projection stacks with Armor Strip abilities. Great change, by the way, DE. So all you need is 328%. And with this build, we're getting 329. Just 1% over, because you gotta make sure. You know what I'm saying? And another great thing about Pillage is that all of that armor and shields that have been stripped is basically being stolen from the enemies and then returned back to you to replenish your shields and grant you over shields. So it's a great ability to replenish your shields so you can reset your shield gate if and when they break. Coil Horizon is just there if you want some CC and grouping. It's not really used as much. Our main abilities are going to be Illage, Cathode Grace, which is just going to be active at all times, which is going to also give us energy and return, and whoop, Rotor Swell, which is going to be our main DPS ability. Another great thing is that her passive, enemies affected by electric procs, increases the critical hits that your abilities deal. So what I'm saying is you will have a primer, which is a utility weapon that you will use to apply multiple status effects, one of them being electricity on enemies. And that's going to also increase our damage output on the fourth. I wanted to do a really cool but but anyway, I missed. That's pretty much how the build works. Now, what is the gameplay loop here? All right, here we are looking at the gameplay loop. Very simple. You got your group of enemies here with all that armor. Pathetic, right? Strip them. Okay. Very easy. And activate your fourth and your third. And prime them. And look at that. You have a like 40 plus seconds on the third ability. And now we have full 60 seconds. It's it's that stupid, isn't it? This is one of the strongest <laughs> run and nuke Warframes right now, if you min-max right. Jire is very particular with the type of mods that she needs. She actually needs more mod slots than other Warframes. But thanks to Archon Shards, we can fix that. Oh yeah, and now we got this little thing at the top right called Arcane Steadfast. You know what that does? You know what that does? I want you to pay attention to my abilities on the bottom right. Wait, that didn't use energy. That also didn't use energy. What the heck? Exactly. That's what it does. It allows you to have three ability casts for free. With this build right here, I was able to reach 180 kills 
per minute. I, I was blown away. It was so comfortable. All I had to do was just go there, prime, press pillage, and enemies would just die. But of course, getting this high KPM would require you to have a decent tile set with nice corridors for enemy to spawn through. Now, what are you going to be needing for Archon Shards? Two Amber Shards to give you the casting speed because we're replacing natural talents and two Red Tau Force Shards. Each Red Tau Force Shard gives you 15% power strength and then you can have one regular one. So you see how that guy looks out of place? I know, it looks disgusting. So let's take a look at the build. Corrosive Rejection and the Aura this allows me to reduce the power strength requirement for pillage to get that 100% strip. You only need 328% power. And in this case, we have 329, thanks to a rank 9 Blind Rage, Transient Fortitude, and Umbral Intensify. Now, we do have negative duration. This negative duration gives you 5 seconds of leeway for you to get kills to keep up your cathode's grace. Now, if you can't kill within five seconds, then you're, you're using the build wrong. And you just you just got skill issued by the game. And the negative duration also helps pillage return faster. Because we cast, it returns, we're always topped up with shields, and we don't have to worry about dying. Yes, this build does rely on shield gating as the main source of survivability. Hence why pillage does two things, armor strip and survivability. Very clean. Prime sure footed for the knockdown and stagger resistance because spending less time in your bunt is a huge DPS increase. And we're going to be using epitaph, which will stagger you. And you're going to be shooting it at your feet or within the wasenity. Just saying. Archon Stretch and Reach for the 175% range. And Stretch pairs really well with Gyre because electric abilities, you know, abilities that deal electric damage will give you energy in return, which pairs well with Cathode's Grace because Cathode's Grace, as long as it's active, gives you energy over time. You may have noticed we have 4.9 right there. That can be easily fixed if you get a third Tau Force Shard or as soon as you start your rotation, make sure you use your Focus School, whichever one you want, but in this case, I'll be using Xenric to give you that little bit of power strength to get at least five energy per second. Rolling Guard for the iframes and status cleansing. You may say, hey, Nightmare, but we have Pillage. Pillage status cleanses. I understand that. But Rolling Guard doesn't only status cleanse you, but gives you those invulnerability phases, which is very helpful when you want to engage and disengage from a sticky situation or a bunch of Eximus effects, which you, you don't want to be dealing with. Cathode's current here, very important. Without this, don't even use Gyre at this point. Now, you may have noticed in the Arcane section, I do not have Molt Augmented. Yes, remember you, oh, I gotta get Molt Augmented so I can max my power strength. This time, I'm using Energize. Yeah, you already know what Energize does, pick up a health orb, and energy return. Very simple. However, we have a new arcane into the mix. Arcane Steadfast. I know some of you be like, hey, Nightmare, you're smoking copium. Steadfast is only 20% chance. But this 20% chance actually procs quite often. This is 20% chance for you to not lose energy in the next three ability casts, which is damn useful. Hey, there it is. There it is. Steadfast. Three casts, boys. Three casts. One. Oh, we got it. We got that really fast, though. Actually, not bad, dude. You're streaming with one cast? Yeah. Oh, it, it, it procced again. Actually fucking worth it. Let's go. Am I coping? 100%. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 I don't have power. Please, please, no, no, no. Yes, yes, it casts. 14th cast. Yes. <laughs> and now we have our flex mod slot, which is here where I use Prime Flow. Now, Prime Flow can be useful in a scenario where you lose your energy or you lose the use of your abilities. Falling off a map, walking through a nullifier, violence, y'all know how it is. However, you can also use efficiency mods. It's up to you. Use whatever you want on this slot. I decided to go for Flow because it's brain dead and very simple. Otherwise, it's, it's just comfortable. It has survivability, thanks to pillage. It can strip Acolyte's armor, thanks to pillage. It's just so stupid. Oh yeah, another thing, another thing, another thing, another thing. If you're fighting Corpus, you can use Shield Disruption instead of Corrosive Projection, just to get rid of the shields. That, that's it. 
For the focus school, Xenric. Why not? Because it also has that node that allows you to not consume energy when you cast an ability. Right here, Inner Might. This used to be heavy attack efficiency, but with the focus rework, it now allows you to cast an ability without using energy with a 60 second cooldown. And of course, we also have Wellspring and Hardened Wellspring. Wellspring just gives you that energy regen, and Hardened Wellspring, when you recast the first ability on your operator, gives you a bit of power strength. Is it needed? No, no, not necessarily, but if you want, go for it. I would say use it just to give Cathode's Grace a little boost in that energy income department. You know? Very useful. Otherwise, you're chilling. And now, for your utility weapon, I'm using Epitaph here. Epitaph's Quick Tap Fire, if you don't understand, a touch. You just you just touch your mouse. Mm. That's quick tap. You hold it. It turns into a single target projectile. You, you don't want that. That's due to water for priming. But for damage, it's actually pretty useful. So boom, boom, boom. Large AOE. Proc multiple status effects. Fulmination to give you a larger blast radius. Amalgam diffusion just for faster animations. Doesn't matter. Eh, sometimes. Lethal Torrent for a bit of fire rate and multi shot. Viral because to debuff enemies and electricity. Gunslinger for a bit of a fire rate and short shot for that status chance. Emmy mutation, very useful. Now, you may say, hey, uh, why don't you use Arcane Cucumber? Listen, Cucumber is nice. You can use Arcane Cucumber. Problem is, this is very good on single target priming. AOE priming, not the best. So if you want to use it, you can use it. But it's, it's quite random. Freitas here is only used for utility, nothing else. You can literally have this unmodded. But the reason I'm using it is because of the second evolution for that sprint speed and slide and that parkour velocity. 30% parkour velocity. And the builds, it's just a heavy attack build with dispatch overdrive. This just gives you even more movement speed. And the primary weapon can be whatever you want. Even if you armor strip acolytes, your rotus wall won't do enough damage to kill the Acolytes because they also have some damage attenuation, but their damage attenuation is more towards consistent DPS rather than burst damage. So use a weapon with high viral damage, Brahma, Bazaar, whatever, I'm just using this. So guys, for those who can do this build, try it out. But, but, but I'm saving it for- That's what I'm saying, for those who want to, do it. For those who really like Gyre and want to see her just wipe the map do it trust me it's worth it all right folks that has been it for me and i do hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did please feel free to leave a like share and subscribe for more warframe content streams and so much more do refer to the description thanks for watching and as always a peace